going to uh, begin again. Uh, so uh, we now have a uh, presenter from the CARE Center. And Ann, I'm going to have you introduce yourself in one second. Make sure the green light is on. Uh, kind of keep it close enough so that uh, it, it's heard. We are live on television. Okay. Uh, and it will be carried over the weekend on Channel 15 as well, so both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, cool. So if you can introduce yourself, it's a 15-minute presentation. Yep. Uh, I do suggest uh, if there are, if you were not able to get the full funding, if, if you had a lesser amount, what could still have some positive impact? Okay. Okay, thank you. Great. So... Um, Thank you for being flexible uh, with my appointment. And um, I'm Ann Teschner, the Executive Director of the Care Center here in Holyoke. And we are, uh, we've proposed uh, funding for a program we're calling Moving Women To and Through College. So I'm gonna start with why I think this matters um, in light of the pandemic. It's really meant to be a proposal that we um, that I'm urging people to think about as rebuilding. What do we do when, when we're on the other side of this horribleness? Um, and what kind of opportunity does this really present? I've been working in Holyoke for um, almost 30 years and have seen it ebb and flow. And I have this sense that we really could do something big on the other side of this pandemic. So this proposal is intended toward that. Um, so our target population is uh, low-income women of color in Holyoke. And um, we are keenly aware that Holyoke has, <clears throat> I think at this point, about half as many uh, people uh, in the population uh, with um, college degrees as compared to the state as a whole. And I think that's gotten in our way for rebuilding. So this is being proposed with that in mind. Um, it's a three-part program. Uh, maybe I'll step back and just give a quick overview of the Care Center. The Care Center has been here for 33 years. We had an initial focus on uh, pregnant and parenting teens, moving them through a GED program and off of the uh, welfare system, and we've really grown to be um, more than that. We still do that, and this project uh, really is moving women from having dropped out of um, high school to uh, getting into college to succeeding in college. And we've had this, we've been working on these programs now for about 15 years. And it was really done with um, a smaller focus, uh, that being the families we serve, um, that to ensure that people really can move out of poverty. And it became very clear to me early on, you can't with a GED, you just can't. So the, the idea of having college education um, accessible, and we've learned over the years that the level of support needed uh, for these women is higher than perhaps some other students. But with those supports, they succeed. So at this point, we have a high set program. We have a, a dual enrollment high set college program. And we have a college on site now at the Care Center, Bard Micro College Holyoke. All of these are designed specifically for women headed households, acknowledging the challenges that they face. They're different challenges than other students. But we are so psyched to report that we're now recruiting for the sixth year of the Bard Micro College, and our graduation rate is 74%. It's right up there with Harvard. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what Harvard's rate is, but it's astonishing. And based on that, Bard has actually uh, created two more microcolleges, one at the Brooklyn Public Library and another one's opening in Harlem. This really works. And it's a combination of um, high expectations, lots of support. So there's daycare and transportation and a nurse and food and you know clearing the decks so that these women can study. Um, and then our partnership with Bard, um, they've made it uh, very affordable for our, our students. So at this, uh, at this point, it's free for our students. But for the, the overall cost um, is about, uh, sorry, I don't have it right before me, but I'll get it. Um, the cost per student is, is 
not very high, um, it, based in part on it's funded in, in large part, there's kind of three strands of funds. One is uh, Pell Grants that students can get, and that goes to, to BARD to pay for the costs of the professors. <clears throat> And then each the year there's about a $600,000 um, additional gap that we need to fill to make it all happen. And we've been able to do that, and we want to um, expand that. So this proposal is about an expansion um, to be able to provide this college to more women in the community. We're projecting 100 women a year in the, um, the whole uh, string of college activities that we do, including the micro-college. And so it's a two-year proposal, so our hope is that it'll impact 200 women, sorry. Yeah. Um, so given that, um, it's, it's in large part, the proposal we have put forward to you folks is um, for 200,000 a year for two years, and um, the rest of the funds to date are, uh, we have secured. So. This will allow us to expand and allow us to keep it growing and keep it happening in the community. Um, particularly with, with COVID, it's, 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 we've been able to, we offered it this year, 17 women graduated from the micro college, 12 from the high set program, and we have other college classes going on as well. So, you know, uh, f this was during the pandemic, which kind of blows my mind that people did this. and. We were incredibly supportive. We gave people computers and people who didn't have access, we gave them whatever those spigots are called um, that let you get access to, to the internet if you don't already have it. So this, this really is intended to, um, to really uh, bolster the, um, the, kind of po the population and the, and the hope that more businesses will come into town with um, more highly educated women ready to be inc incredibly committed to Holyoke. That's part of it too. These are, you know, people who live here and want to live here. Um, and we just see this as a real opportunity to, it, it is an opportunity. It's a program that works. It's a program that's tailored to uh, meet the needs of a, a sizable part of the, the population in Holyoke. There's a sizable I don't remember the stats at this time, but it's, I think it's close to half are female-headed households. So this is really you know, focusing on a, a crowd of people who A, have shown that with support they succeed, and B, are ready to do it, and we're ready to, to do it too. Um, if we were not to receive full funding, then we'd have to scale back just how much we could expand and keep it going. How many, with the full funding, how many new students would you expect? Um, each year, probably in the range of 25, 30. So we're at about 75 now, so it would grow to 100 each year. And hang on. I so 100 would, be, 100 would be consistent once you got going. The goal would be to have 100 consistently. Yes. And of those, how many are in college? Um, all of them are involved in some kind of college work. Uh, the micro college itself is at, um, I think, with the last class that we just brought in, it's about 50. Okay. So, and there are other college activities that we do. Okay. Um, so, yeah, the funding, we're re requesting about two, uh, we've got secured two-thirds of the funding at this point. Okay. And I'm, I'm just really psyched about what what could happen here in town? I really am. And we're seeing it already. We're seeing um, the graduation rate at the micro colleges, 74%. A huge part of them uh, have gone on to Mount Holyoke and Smith mm -hmm. on full rides. Um, we're be just beginning to see, and now people are getting jobs and you know, working in the schools and working as social workers. And okay. this was not possible for any of them six years ago. Okay. Uh, and so the 200,000, that is just for one year? Yes. And so, okay. Yep. And you would request a second year of 200,000 as yep. well? Okay. Was that, I, that was okay to do, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. And mostly it will cover the cost of the college professors who pay everybody um, and some staff um, support, but okay. it's, you know, directly to the program. Okay. And 
and maybe I'm missing it, but it, did, could you just also, when you get a chance, and, and you can send it through through Kate, uh, and she'll get it to me, uh, just what your budget is for the program now, uh, and what it would be if you were to get this funding for the entire program, not just the addition, but for the entire program. If you the did, whole, okay. yeah. So you're okay. trying to expand on your program, so I, I kind of want to see where you are now, yep. and how many you're serving, and then if you can, yep. what it would be like if you got all this funding, yep. and then what you're serving. So I can kind of get a full gap. And you got five minutes still left here. Okay. okay. I still want to find this. It's a fun number. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I'll find it somewhere. I'll find it when I leave. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the other piece is just to make sure everyone understands this is totally free to everyone who participates. So they end up with a free associate's degree from Bard's College. It's pretty good. And, and what's the, so, is there a specific associate degree? Yep, it's in the liberal arts. And that was really intentional too. We thought about, okay, who are the leading at the moment, who are the leading employers in the region and their higher ed, in insurance, and healthcare. And all of them need people who can think and read and write and plan, and mm -hmm. that's what the liberal arts degree really prepares people for. I'm, I'm gonna ask what is probably a dumb question, but I've asked dumb questions many times in my life, so I'll ask it anyway. So uh, ha have you not partnered up with Hoyle Community College at all? It and, we, and if not, why not? <laughs> we do in, in a, um, we have tried for many years to partner up with Holyoke Community College, and it's been uh, difficult to uh, have them work with the kinds of supports these students need. Okay. It was often seen as just too much, and it is a lot. Okay. You know, there's daycare and yep. transportation, and, and that was one of our, and we'd been working with BARD for 25 years as okay. well. Okay. But that was one of our kind of decisions as an organization. Do we take all these supports that we know affect the outcome and recreate the care center somewhere, or do we move a college into the care center? And okay. we approached Bard, and we were really happy when they said, sure, we'll do so it. So they you. come to you to do this? They come to your, uh, yes. your facility? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Which is really cool. And when it's all over, come and visit. Oh, and I forgot to mention, oh God, the other piece that we've just launched is a housing project for women in college, Roque House with Wayfinders. Um, and that's over on Elm Street. Yep. It's really cool. And the, when the pandemic's over, you got to come. That they, they started, they moved in already? Yes, everybody okay, moved in thought. in January. That's what I thought, okay. Right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, and that's part of the supports as well. So those yep. folks are in and, college. And how many students live there? 10, 10 okay. families. Um, so, you know, that great idea of the two generations having an yep. impact, uh, it's, it's great. And there's a case manager there on site who's there, you know, helping people with their whatever, you know, challenges. But also uh, she has a, an academic focus as well. So if people need tutoring, she's prepared to help with that. And then we're um, also just hired an artist in residence. So there's a, a cultural center on the first floor, performance space, an art room. We'll be using Wisteria Hearst just a little less <laughs> because it's it, we can. Uh, it's got the capacity for a 65 person audience. So okay. I kind of like that yeah, idea. Yeah, and yet feel free to invite me. I go to a lot of things. Yeah. Once I go, they usually say, why did we invite him? But I still would come. Oh, yeah, please do. <laughs> Even with the pandemic, you're okay with coming? I, I, I wear a mask if need I be. Do and, uh, you know, I obviously take precautions and I encourage people to take precautions. But I want, also want to support things going on in the community. So. Oh, definitely. I'll, I'll give you a call. Okay. We're right up the hill. Time's up. You have a, a minute, minute left. Last minute. Is this when I do like the fight song or? <laughs> The Bard fight song. I do they don't have think one? you have one. <laughs> I don't think so either. Thank you. All right, thanks, Dan. I really appreciate this, and I'm thank, so thank excited. Just so you know, I mean, I'm sure you already do. I mean, we've got $99 million of requests for $13 million of money, so yep. we're trying to work. Or I'm, I, and I know both the uh, Office of Community Development and the Citizens Advisory Council have really tried to figure how do we stretch this money? How do we get the maximum bang for our buck? Yep. Uh, we're still working on it. I'll be working on it for another couple of weeks, trying to 
Hey, can we spend some here that would do this and we can do this here? Yep. Uh, and uh, there are other sources of funding that might come in that also could play a role. But we are trying to do all of that. There are some tough choices, but we are going to try to do exactly what I just said, trying to make the maximum benefit to the community and trying to make sure that uh, what we spend, we spend wisely. So, But I appreciate your proposal. I also want to emphasize that we appreciate what you've done all these years. Thank you. And giving young women a chance to really get their lives together and have a chance to have a better life. And, and they and really do. And that's absolutely. why I've been there all this absolutely. time. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. And right. yeah, just to, I get it. That this doesn't necessarily look directly related. It's not health, even though we do health care. Yeah. But it's the rebuild. Absolutely. I'm psyched. Thank you. Bye.